Hello YouTube, Chrome Freak here. Okay guys, Glock 23, second gen, there was no first gen 23, I'm not going to get into the gens real quick, but what I wanted to do real fast was, uh, my channel is about gunsmithing, breaking down, teaching, learning, all that good stuff. I know there's about a million and a half detailed disassemblies and reassemblies of Glocks out there, however on my channel I do not have one. I talked to a couple people about it, and being as that is what my channel is mainly about, that and I'll be doing a lot of gunsmithing videos, and my goal is to just about any and every gun that you could think about have a complete disassembly and reassembly on, I can't skip over a Glock. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this one. This is, like I said, it's a Gen 2, which is the first generation of 23s that came back in the country years ago. Real quickly before we get into that, what I do is this little bag right here with my Glock Armorer's tool, and inside that I carry this little box that I've got every kind of spare part for my 27. That's an AR-15 detent pin spring, I don't know what that's doing in there, but anyhow, I carry my 27 on a daily basis in my Maxpedition bag that I carry with me. I carry a spare of everything in that 27 that I could think of that could possibly break. I got a spare of every single part, even a recoil spring as you can see. Every part in there except a barrel. Anything else on that gun goes down, I'm going to be able to fix it. And guys that prep and, and carry uh, bug out bags and that kind of thing on them, uh, should, I don't care, care what kind of pistol you, you decide to use or carry with you, you should have a spare set of parts for the entire gun just like this. And this is what makes, to me, Glock separate from everybody else is the simplicity of fixing them and the parts. In this little box right there, I carry a spare of everything except, like I said, a barrel. This right here is a Glock armor or slide plate that goes on the back. Gun's been safety checked. There's nothing in it. Uh, that slide plate would come off. This one goes on. And what it is is you could actually take a regular slide plate like that if you have an extra one and cut it almost in half. And what it does is it gives you a view and access to look into the back of the firearm, what your um, connect is doing and your, um, your, your trigger bar and all that, how it um, interacts with each other. You'll be able to see with that plate on what's going on. So that's what that is. And it was in that box. And I had taken it out, and that's why it's laying on the table. So with that said, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to get started. I know there's a crap ton of these videos up, guys, but i got to have it on my channel. I am a certified Glock armor, so that means I am certified by Glock to work on their pistols. Not a big deal. Uh, a lot of guys can get that if you belong to GSSF or you're a police officer or military, anything like that. You contact Glock. They'll get you in a class. I think it's worth doing if, if, if you own a Glock pistol and plan on owning them. It's good to know everything there is about them and I highly recommend the course. It's an eight hour one day thing and it's well worth doing. Uh, anyway, with that said, and it also gives you the right to not only work on Glock pistols certified from Glock to do that, it gives you the right to buy parts from Glock at a very good price and also um, access to parts you're not going to get because they won't sell them to the public. Okay, so with that said, let's get this started. We're going to do a complete detailed disassembly and reassembly on the 23. Now, the 20, it could be a 23, it could be a 27, 7, it doesn't matter what Glock, they all break down identically. They might be different parts, but they break down identically. Let's go ahead and get started. We'll do the basic field strip first. Take out the recoil spring, set it off to the side. Uh, we'll take out the barrel, set it off to the side. Uh, we'll go ahead since we got the slide here and we'll do the slide before we do anything else. Now hopefully I'm going to be able to with the lighting. I know it's horrible guys. I'm trying to work out a solution to lighting to where things are going to be a little bit better. But you're going to take your Glock Armors tool or a punch or whatever you got. This right here is your striker or firing pin. Between the back of it right there, there is a plastic sleeve right there that I'm pushing on. So you can see it. So what you're going to do, and I'm hoping we're going to be able to get this with the camera, I'm going to push down on that sleeve like so at the same time I'm going to take my thumb and push the plate off. Now you just don't want to slide that plate off and get your thumb out of the way because you'll lose your uh, plunger and all that and it comes shooting out. So you got you got to slide that plate off but still keep your thumb there. So push down and, and let's hope we can do it. My thumb is a little slick actually. 
And some guns might be tight, guys, where you may have to use a screwdriver. And in this case, I might have to because I just put all new... There, it's coming. There, there it is. Okay. Keep your thumb over it like I just did. There's the plate. The plate's off. Now, you can slowly just let your thumb off. It's not going to go anywhere. But that... This plunger right here under spring pressure, you just slide that plate off. It's going to come shooting out. Okay, let's break down this slide. We don't want to lose anything, so we keep stuff together. We're going to put the slide plate over there. The first thing we're going to take out is going to be my um, striker or firing pen assembly. And we're going to put that off to the side for right now, but I will be breaking that completely down also in just a minute. The next piece that we're going to go ahead and we'll take out is going to be your plunger, your plunger spring, and your bearing. And that will come apart. We'll go ahead and take that. There's a spring apart. And this could be a little hard sometimes. This is a brand new bearing I put in there, by the way. I'm going to use a tool to get that off. There's three different sizes Glock makes. I'm not going to get into the different size ones, what goes on certain models. Whatever your model is, you'll know. Uh, they go by color, actually. Okay, so that's completely disassembled. Now, the next thing that's going to come off the slide, what we're going to do is I'm going to just kind of angle the slide down. Reach in with my finger, or you can use your Glock tool, and that is your firing pin safety. You're simply going to take it and depress it, and just like that, there goes your extractor. It falls right out, let up with your finger, and there's your firing pin safety and spring. That will come out. You can pull them apart to get them back together. Simply put them back, push, put them back together, push, and kind of turn counterclockwise, and it'll lock it back in like that. Okay, that is completely, now the slide is completely disassembled. Okay, I'm not sure if you guys could see down inside of there, but if you can, there's a plastic, there's another round plastic. Can you see it in there? I'm not sure if you can. That right there is another sleeve, kind of like the one that's on the firing pin here. And what that does is keep your, um, you know, your firing pin lined up and all that in the channel nicely. There is absolutely no need to take that out unless you're having a problem with the firing system in the gun. That has been, I have actually changed that on one Glock at K&W. And what happened was the guy got a bunch of dirt and grime and nasty stuff down in there because he oiled where you're not supposed to put any oil in your firing pin channel at all. And it ended up messing that up quite a bit and, and it was messing with the striker or the firing pin itself. Glock says if you take the time and you pull that sleeve out to go ahead and replace it with a new one because you will damage it by pulling it out. The slide is done. But we're not done using the slide. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the firing pin or striker apart. And guys, I'm trying to do this video quick at the same time, trying to be thorough. You see, oh, I slid that down in there backward and kind of let it use it for itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, grab the spring, just pull the spring back, give it a little shake, and these cups should come right off. There they are. Just simply let out on the spring. Spring comes off. There's your firing pin. And there's your plastic um, insert right there. So that is completely done now. And that is the slide. Then the next thing we're going to detail disassembly is the complete frame here. As you can hear my cat out there in the next room <laughs> fighting with each other. i got a couple of cats. Anyway, guys, uh, what we're going to do is there's three pins on here. you got number one pin, you got number two pin, and you got number three pin. And that's how they're going to stay in that order. I might have to take a minute break here to go break up those cats before I get into disassembling this frame. So why don't we do that? I'll be back in a minute, guys. Okay, guys. We're going to strip the frame completely down. You got number one pin, number two pin, and number three pin. And they're always going to keep, just keep that in mind, always keep them in that order. And just remember, number one, two, three. They are always going to be pushed from the left-hand side, the gun's facing this way, from my side, from the left-hand side, out the right, and they will be put back in the opposite, from the right to the left. Okay, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and push out the first pin. It's the top one, number one pin, just do like that. Push it right out, there it goes. Okay, now number two pin, which seems to give people all kind of issues and problems. This being your slide lock on a Glock, not a release, slide lock. What you're going to do is this holds the key in releasing this pin. <clears throat> it should not take me very much pressure. I'm going to push. At the same time I'm pushing the pin, 
I'm going to be moving the slide lock around with my fingers side to side and maybe up and down a little bit but mainly side to side. That will release that pen with very little pressure that pen will come right out. Watch this guys. Very little pressure. That simple, that easy. No hammers, no beating, no banging. It comes right out. Now from that point I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take that slide lock out and set it to the side. Now we'll go ahead and we'll remove number three pen which is in the back. Just take it from this side once again and right on out. The reason we do that is it's always it's the same way every time and you'll never forget and I'll explain to you why we do that. Your slide lock fits into the frame as so. As you can see you have two grooves on the pen that goes it's, it's actually your trigger pen or number two pen. When you put this thing out, when you push it out, this is actually locked I'll do it. It's locked into that little groove right there on the pen. So we always push it from right, from the left side out the right, so you only have to defeat that one time. See what I'm saying? And the same thing when you come back in. You only have to get it back on there the one time. Otherwise, I'd have to get it by this, then by this one, then on out. It makes no sense. So you always go from left to right, and then from on the way in from right to left. Simple as that. Take the Glock tool at this point after you have your third pin out. We're going to take the locking block, just get it up underneath it, simply pull it right out, off to the side. At this point here, the entire housing, trigger bar, and trigger can come out. I'll just take the, my Glock tool on the back right here onto the ejector, kind of lift up a little bit, and just go ahead and, and pull it right out. I like to pull the back up and then out like this. Okay. And just, well, we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to set the frame down for a minute, and then we'll go ahead and we'll take the trigger bar and the housing apart. Okay, this is the way it sits inside the firearm like so. So you got to kind of, I'm doing it backwards so you guys can see. You just kind of twist it, lift it up. See the spring right there. Can you get a good picture of that spring? It's shaped like an S. If you could see how it's on the bar, it's shaped like, it, like you're looking at an S, like Superman. Okay, that's exactly how it's going to go on and back, you know, off and then back on again. So I'll go ahead and I'll just take it off the bar first. Now the bar's loose. I'll tell you something about the bar in one second. And take it off the back of the housing and lay it down. Uh, real quickly, um, the pins that are on the trigger itself, you can see there are two. These are one-way pins for a reason. They do not come out. There are some competition shooters. Now, as far as I know, most of them don't allow it anymore, any of the big organizations, for safety reasons. This right here and acts all three of your internal safeties built on the Glock safe action pistol is controlled by that little safety release in the middle of the trigger. Some guys like to cut those pins off and pull that out. I don't see any advantage in that whatsoever or why. And I know that, like I said, most of the shooting of organizations that I am aware of will not allow you to use your Glock without that being there. Okay, so if something breaks on this trigger, you got to replace the trigger bar. The whole thing's got to be replaced as it is. It will come in one piece just like that. Okay, now the next piece to come off the housing is going to be our connector right here. This piece will come right. Some, some of them, you could actually use your Glock tool to push right there and it'll push it out. In this case, it's not quite big. The, the Glock tool itself is actually too big to get in there, so I'll use whatever I have on hand. Uh, whether it be a little screwdriver, an o-ring tool like that, just get underneath it, pick it up a little bit. Once you pick it up a little bit, you just go ahead and pull it right out, just right out. And that's it. Set it off to the side. Now, we'll get back to the frame because all that is now disassembled. We have two pieces left to take out of the frame itself. You got your takedown lever, which we'll do right now, is right here. You know, you got a lever on both sides of the gun, but it's actually one piece. And it's a very simple process to do. This spring right here, this little metal bar right there, is nothing but a spring. That's all that does. I'm simply going to take my Glock tool, and I'm hoping you can see that. I'm going to push down on that spring. As I push down on that spring, I'm going to push out the other side, uh, the piece. It's already starting to come out, as you can see. In fact, I can go ahead and just pull it out now. Once you got it going, it'll pull right out. Now, just remember, this is the way it's going to go back in. With this big hump on the top, this little notch on the bottom actually fits on top of that little spring. And when we put it back together, you'll actually hear it go click when I put it back in. It'll give an audible click. And there's the spring itself. We'll take that out and sit it right there off to the side. Now the last piece that we're going to be able to take out of the frame, and we'll have a completely disassembled frame, 
is the magazine release itself. Okay guys, you're going to have to take your index finger and hold it so it has to keep the magazine release from coming out like that. You're going to take your index finger here and hold it. You're going to reach in with a longer screwdriver or some type of a long tool like this and you're going to grab the spring and, my, and hopefully we're going to be able to see that on camera. Can you see the spring? Yeah, I think. Okay, I'm going to take the spring, I'm going to push it off to the side. That's going to be hard because I can't see. There it is, it popped right out. Do you see it? Yeah. I'm going to pull it out, let it go. Just like that, just push the magazine release and pull it out this side. It's now out, and now all I'm going to do is reach in with a pair of needle nose pliers, grab the spring itself, and pull it right out. And it fell out somewhere. There it is. <laughs> it fell out. And that's it. Now that's a completely stripped frame. Completely. The only thing metal left in there are the rails. This is a one piece that actually is molded into the frame around here. On the back, it's two separate, but that's it. They don't come out. The frame on the Glock is now completely stripped 100%, and we'll start putting it back together. Okay, guys, thanks.